Okay, welcome everyone. So, we were in talking about in the previous lecture the optimi the dynamic optimization problem which involved taking decisions over n time n time steps or n time periods. So, the time periods were, den were denoted in this way 0, 1, 2 and so on ending at a terminal time time n. We were we said we were taking decisions for each time period, and the the decisions uh, uh, when one were to be we had taken this example where we were taking decisions for an inventory control problem. So the decisions were being made at the left end point of the time period, and noise was being noise was being realized at during the time period, and uh, because of uh, uh, because of the presence of noise, we saw that uh, our problem, which is act, which was actually stated as first as having to decide the actions that we need to take at each time instant, that problem actually became a problem about planning for every possible state that could be realized during this time instant. So our pro uh, so to to recall, say suppose x k is my is the state at time k u k is the action at time k x k plus 1 is given as f k of x k u k w k where this is w k is the noise at time uh, time k or during at time or at or a period k and the problem was to minimize this this cost which involved which was a, uh, a sum of a terminal cost plus 0 to n minus 1. Uh, plus uh, uh, costs at each time instant. Now, this this minimization was to be achieved by choosing uh, actions at each time step, but because this the the plan had to be made before the realization of uncertainty, our way of posing the problem was that of minimizing this over all policies. Policy is denoted which is denoted by mu 0 to mu n minus 1. Now, we know we notice that this would become therefore, a function of the policy and also of the initial state. Okay, the, uh, the cost that we would incur would be a function of the policy and of the initial state and so, the, the optimal cost uh, was the cost of the optimal policy this was denoted by j star of x 0. So, notice that this optimization the one that I have uh, the one that I have put in a box here, this optimization is an optimization of a of a function over the space of functions. Okay, the decision variables are, is a, is a sequence of functions. So the that is the so what one needs to decide is a, is this sequence of functions. Now the just imagine suppose for simplicity suppose there were just uh, say suppose there were 10 states at each time instant, 10 states say at each time instant, suppose you had 5 actions to take, 5 actions, 5 possible actions, 5 actions that are admissible at each time instant and suppose there are uh, say um, 3 uh, time periods. Okay, so uh, so you want to do this. You want to make these decision over uh, three uh, over three time periods. So three this needs to be decided thrice, right? So how many possible functions are we looking at? So how many choices are there for 
for uh, for functions at at the first time period. So, a function at the first time period would map the set of actions to, uh, to uh, the set of states to the set of actions right. And so, every uh, for every state you can take fi uh, 5 possible actions. So, as a result the number of possible uh, the number of possible uh, uh, functions that you can have at time instant 1 is 5 raised to 10 right. And now you have 5 raised to 10 possible functions at time instant 1. Similarly, there are 5 raised to 10 possible functions at time instant 2 and 5 raised to 10 possible functions at time instant 3. So, the total number of choices therefore becomes 5 raised to 10 times 5 raised to 10 times 5 raised to 10. As you can see this is an enormous number just for a simple problem like which involves 10 states and 5 possible and 5 actions and 3 time periods. As, as the number of time periods increases as the problem gets more realistic with more states and more actions the number of possible choices grows even further right it grows even larger. So, consequently thinking of this problem as in the space of functions is intimidating it it is it is it is practically impossible to solve the problem if if you want to think of the problem in terms of functions. So, our goal is going to now be to think see if we can somehow get to the value of the function uh, implicitly either uh, through through this uh, uh, by by uh, somehow uh, cleverly evaluating the function only at relevant points or or somehow getting to the value of the function through a by by optimizing not over the space of functions but uh, by uh, but over the space of actions in some way okay so at the cornerstone of this reduction is what is called the principle of optimality okay so this is what's called the principle of optimality the principle of optimality in dynamic programming simply states the following so let me state the actual principle and then i will explain what we, what it means so it says this so let p let pi star okay which is just denoted by mu 0 star to mu n minus 1 star Suppose this let this be an optimal policy. Be an optimal policy for the dynamic programming problem for the for the dynamic programming problem that we have stated on the on the left ok. And um, we will make a technical assumption and assume ok the technical assumption is assume um, that when using pi star a given state x i say denoted x i occurs at time i with positive with positive probability ok. Suppose it occurs with at time i with positive probability. Now, uh, consider the uh, the consider the consider the following problem consider the following let us call it a sub problem ok. 
okay. consider the following sub problem. where we uh, we are at x i at time i and want to minimize the cost to go. From time i to time n. Okay. So, consider the problem this sub problem where suppose it is as if your your decision problem has actually started at state i at state x i and at time i. The original problem has actually started at time 0 with state x 0, but we are not looking at that problem we are looking at the sub problem which has started at time i and form a nominal state x i okay. and it continues from time i till time the original time horizon that you had fixed which is uh, the end till time n itself right. So, the cost then is the cost that you would incur from i up till time n ok. This is what we call the cost to go ok. That, so, the cost to go is expectation you still have the terminal cost g n of x n and you have this cost which starts from k equal to i and goes till k equal to n minus 1 once again of now g k x k ok. Now, x k and u k, u k remember is going to be evaluated as a function uh, u k has to be evaluated as a function of x k as before ok. So, this now looks like any other dynamic op programming problem except that it has started from uh, um, it, ha it does not have horizon time horizon n, but uh, time horizon n minus i all right and it starts from state x i ok. And then now the here is the the uh, so here is the um, our result. So, the result is that you the the truncated policy then the truncated policy truncated policy and that is denoted by um, mu i star mu i plus 1 mu i plus 1 star till mu n minus 1 star right is optimal for the above sub problem. Okay. So, what is this principle of optimality saying? Let us let us go through this carefully. So, the principle of optimal is, uh, is basically saying this. So, suppose you suppose your pi star ok is the optimal policy this here is your optimal policy ok. I am going to take this as my optimal policy ok and it says uh, suppose I do the following I consider a, a sub problem ok consider this sub problem in which uh, you start at at state uh, initial state x i ok at time i ok and we want to minimize the cost to go you want to minimize uh, the cost that 
in that you incur starting from time i going up till time n okay this is your cost to go then look then if you look at this particular problem okay this pro for this problem what is the optimal policy well uh, the principle of optimality says you just look at your original policy this original policy that you had here and just truncate it look at the truncation of this policy so this policy has functions for each time instant right from 0 to n minus 1 you look at the policy starting from time i till n minus 1 all right so look at this a uh, truncation of this particular policy and that that's your truncated policy mu i star to mu n minus 1 star then that truncated policy is actually optimal for this sub problem okay so this policy uh, so what is this effectively saying so let's think about what uh, what's the, in you know in plain english what is this problem what is this the principle of optimality actually say so let's suppose we think of a problem of finding a shortest path from going from uh, say mumbai to delhi suppose you want to find the, the, the our shortest way of getting from mumbai to delhi what is the uh, what would be uh, and suppose you found the shortest path that means it you found your optimal policy which says that you you know take uh, go to this town then you go to that town and and so on and so forth say and you find that the op optimal path from going from mumbai to delhi say passes through jaipur say for instance now what what does this this uh, what does this principle of optimality say well if you have found the shortest path from mumbai to delhi and suppose that pa path passes through jaipur okay then the you look at the uh, the leg of of the of your shortest uh, shortest journey which has gone from jaipur all the way till delhi then that leg should also be optimal for the problem of finding the shortest path from jaipur to delhi okay so we weren't really looking for uh, solving the problem of from Jaipur to Delhi at all, okay. But if your shortest path passes through Delhi, all right, then the optimal thing to do, uh, the then the then the optimal path that you have found, the optimal shortest path that you have found all the way from Mumbai to Delhi, has to also be in this leg, also has to also give you in this leg the shortest path from Jaipur to Delhi, right? This is the principle of optimality. We have encountered something like this in shortest path problems in linear programming and so on. But this is this is, this being a stochastic problem is a little bit more general because here we are here uh, we, it's not as simple as just the shortest path passes through so and so point because uh, we, here uh, the the states that you will end up in or the cities that you will end up passing through etc depends on noise. Okay, and the so what we need to do is put in a few qualifiers which is what we have done here we have we need to put in a few qualifiers about the occurrence of a state with positive probability right so we said that we need, we, we can say this for states that are that do occur with positive probability but once they occur with positive probability under the optimal policy what we can be sure is that starting from that state till the very end of the time horizon the optimal policy continues to remain optimal or the truncated version of that optimal policy continues to remain optimal right so what this means is that your uh, the 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 your way of solving uh, your way of thinking about dynamic programming can be broken down a little bit so we don't need to think of this as finding these n functions mu 0 to mu n minus 1 all together but rather we can think of this in in, in chunks now chunks doesn't mean that you think of them separately for each time period that's not the goal the goal is not to you know uh, separate out or remove the interdependencies between time period but rather we think of it uh, uh, starting from one time till the very end and then starting from some time i till the very end and then move that time i backwards okay that that would be the way for, for by which we would uh, we would approach uh, approach this particular problem so i'll elaborate on that in a moment so so this is essentially the uh, the the uh, the principle of optimality so let us see how we can uh, how we can employ this for our inventory control problem so what what is the principle of optimality well we can think of the principle of optimality is saying well whatever policy you start off from that policy will continue to be uh, is uh, whatever policy is optimal for the entire problem 
will continue to be optimal for any for uh, for the problem starting at any time i till the very end. So, why do not we look at the the extreme version of this which is that you put i as n itself or as n minus 1 itself. So, you start from the tail of the problem and you work backwards till you get to the initial time instant. So, let us see how that works. So, so this is now dynamic programming. principle of optim or rather principle of optimality. So, this is principle of optimality now applied to applied to inventory control. So, suppose, suppose we are at, um, so let us, let us start from uh, the, the, the tail sub problem and uh, tail sub problem of length 1, ok. So, sub tail sub problem of length 1. Now, this is actually remember not just n not just one sub problem it is actually n sub problems uh, sorry uh, multiple such sub problems because if you think if you see there is a sub problem here where for each x i right. So, you have a sub problem for um, of course, you have fixed the time instant now as n minus 1, but you have also the in the state to be decided and that is here is notional it is it is any any norm you know any given state x i right at time uh, at time i. So, we need to start do our calculation starting from any initial state x i. So, suppose ok. So, suppose at the beginning suppose the beginning of at the beginning of period n minus 1 the stock of of the item is n minus x n minus 1. So, you have x n minus 1 units of the of the item ok. So, now clearly with the does not matter what the what has happened in the past the inventory manager should now order the amount of inventory that minimizes the uh, the minimizes the cost that starts from now till from time instant n minus 1 till the very end. So, what is the cost then? So, he must he the since you are starting at at time instant n minus 1 the cost that you incur is the cost that of ordering the cost of ordering etcetera etcetera which uh, which you incur at time uh, uh, cost of ordering storage whatever is the so r of x n minus 1 and c of x n minus c of u n minus 1. So, the co the the cost associated with that time instant and the terminal cost associated with time instant n. Right. So, the inventory manager should simply look has to simply look at these two terms which is the cost in that time period the n minus 1 th time period and the terminal cost ok. So, so he clearly the optimal quantity to order is is the solution of now remember we had so, you want to minimize this now 
now remember we uh, we are now at time instant n minus uh, 1 and we are given that we are starting from some initial state x n minus 1. So, for us now this x n minus 1 here this term is not a um, random variable anymore right. So, this is given to us. So, this is actually deterministic technically what we have here is actually not this, but rather given x n minus 1 ok. So, so given x n minus 1 this is actually deterministic. Likewise, u n minus 1 is to be chosen as a function of x n minus 1. So, this quantity is also deterministic ok. So, this optimization is now simply a vector optimization although there is an expectation here we are not optimizing over functions. So, all the all the randomness involved is actually present in x n and that is because x n itself is equal to x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 minus w n minus 1. The w n minus 1 is the random term right. So, so this actually becomes minimization. So, I can actually take out a few terms here. So, firstly this x n the, 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 the term that depends on x n minus 1 here this is just a constant additive constant it has no effect on my optimization. So, I can just drop this term right. So, uh, so this is and, and likewise this being deterministic this being deterministic will actually come out of the expectation right. So, uh, putting everything together what I am looking for looking at is minimizing So, okay, let me. So, putting everything together, what we are looking at is minimizing r x n minus 1 plus the minimum over u n minus 1 of c of u n minus 1 plus the expectation now of, of capital R of x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 minus w n minus 1 this is given x n minus 1 right. So, now let us denote this particular thing here as a as and since re remember we want to order a non negative amount always. So, this is to be constrained in this sort of way. So, this was our constraint on the action right. Okay, so, this particular thing let us denote this by a term let us call this j n minus 1 of x n minus 1. This here is the so, this gives us the what is, what is this particular thing this is giving us the optimal value ok the or the optimal cost that you would incur if you started from state x n minus 1 at time n minus 1. Why is it the optimal cost? Because after all you have taken the optimal decision you could have taken if you were to start from x n minus 1. So, starting from x n minus 1 the optimal thing for you to do would be to, to would be to choose an action u n minus 1 ok the, and the action u n minus 1 would be the would be the one that minimizes this particular cost right. So, this here is uh, yeah, uh, so, this is what is this here is called the opti the is called the value function function at time n minus 1. So, what we got is the value function at time n minus 1. So, now naturally this is a function of of x n minus 1 and the reason it is a function of x n minus 1 is because we said we will st we, we started off our calculation saying let the stop be at some level x n minus 1 some some nominal level x n minus 1. So, naturally the op the optimal the optimal cost you will incur starting from that period onwards is the optimal cost you would incur the, uh, starting from that level onwards is x uh, is a function of x n minus 1. Right. Now, let us look at uh, tail sub problem of length 2 right. So, 
Oh, uh, okay. Before I mention tail sub problem two, notice what we've got here. We've, of course, what we've got here is the optimal value of starting from any state x n minus one that you could potentially reach. But in addition to that, we have also got what the optimal action you would, the op optimal action to be taken as a function of that state, right? So the the minimizing uh, the the minimizing u n minus one here. The minima this this here, when we are doing this, the minimizing u n minus one actually tells you gives you the optimal action as a function of x n minus one. So for the for the nominal x n minus one that you have chosen, the optimal action is the minimum is the minim the minimizer here, the argument here, right? So so u n minus one star actually implicitly is telling is giving you as a as of is, is implicitly uh, coming out uh, is, is implicitly being received as a function of x n minus 1. So, this dependence this dependence here of of the optimal solution to the parameter x n minus 1 that we have chosen x n minus 1 was the parameter u n minus 1 is star is the optimal solution this dependence uh, through this defines for you the function mu n minus 1 star and it will turn out that this is actually also the optimal uh, the, 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 the leg of the optimal policy or the component of the optimal policy uh, for the for the overall problem right. So, so what we are getting is uh, through uh, implicitly here we are getting the value function and also uh, in the process of calculating the value function, we are obtaining also the optimal inventory policy to be chosen from that time onwards.